So this is a cuckoo wrasse. It's got lovely colours, bright orange with blues, purples and a sort of olivey yellow. Now this is a male cuckoo wrasse. Cuckoo wrasse are hermaphrodites. And what happens is, you'll have one of the females will turn into a male. It then has just one male with a bunch of females on a certain area of reef that they inhabit. Now when the male dies, another female will take over and become a male, thereby taking his place. The females, you can tell, they're a bit different. They're more just a sort of plainer orange. They don't have the bright colours like the males. They are good to eat. You want to get a big one. You want to get at least this big. They don't get that big, these fish. But you want to get one at least this sort of size. Preferably take the male. That way you don't damage the stocks because, like I said, the female will take over. But if you want to eat a wrasse, you're probably better off with a balan ras because they are much larger. So this is a balan ras. They live amongst the rocks. They have very sharp front teeth and they have molars in the throat for crushing up crabs, shellfish like limpets, cockles, whatever they get their mouths around, they'll chomp up. They don't tend to eat um, fish baits that much. They will take them, but they're generally a they go after crustaceans or shellfish. Normal size range is from small up to around about six pounds is what you'll normally see. Although they can grow up to around eight pounds, but it'd be very rare if you see one that big. Most of the time they'll be sort of in the one to three pound range. Now, a lot of people think they are bony to eat. It's technically not true. They're just a bit more work. They're quite slimy. They've got very big armored scales. They've got quite a tough skin, so they're a bit of work to cut up and fill it up. It's just a bit more work involved, and you tend to find fish that have a little bit more work involved tend to be classed as bony or not very good because people just don't want to spend the time fiddling with them. But they do make a good eating fish. Um, I prefer to put them under the grill because if you put them into a frying pan, they do taste okay, but they can pick up the oil because they've got quite a soft flesh. For such a tough fish, they actually have quite a soft white flesh. They're a very powerful fish. If you ever fish for them, you'll know that because they'll bend the rod right over when they get hooked. Very big tail. And like I say, they do not feed at night. They only feed in the daytime. At night, they tend to take cover under rocks and hide away, probably hiding from the congreels, that sort of thing that will come after them and eat them. But pretty common here. You have to go around kelp beds, those sort of places. You'll find them over open ground as well, but they generally stick to kelp and live actually in the kelp. You'll find them hiding away actually under the weed. And they come in multiple colours. Now, the cuckoo wrasse is obviously a much brighter looking fish with its bright orange and electric blue, but these will come in reds, greens, browns, various colours. Small fish are males, really big fish are females because they start their life as a male, and as they get much bigger, they turn into females. And they do like warm water. In the, in the winter, they'll tend to move a bit deeper to more where water temperatures don't change so much. But I have seen these in exceptionally cold winters. I've seen wrasse washed up, especially large ones, on the beaches when the water's just got too cold for them. So there you have it, the Ballon wrasse. It's a crack at that one. Probably what, three to four, four pound maybe? Something like that. That's what you want. He's about that one. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. That's a hell of a rasp, I tell you. Okay. It's got to be four pounds, that one, I would have thought. Well, they're chunky, aren't yeah. they? There you go. Cracker. That fish. <laughs> ha! There you go, there's a belter there. That's a yeah, uh, four pounder, five pounder, maybe? Easy. Five? Will it make six? I don't know. There you go, that's rass fishing. Big rass fishing.
Right, we'll start with Kukuras, because Kukuras I wouldn't tend to target. Kukuras, from the shore I've only ever picked up two, and that was off a cliff mark in deep water. Really, if you want to catch Kukuras, you want to go out, you want to go pretty deep. I mean, I would probably fish for them from at least 40, 50 feet, even 60 feet. Usually where the weed stops growing, which is around about 60 feet. We don't get a lot of weed, in the, and the reefs are a bit more void of seaweed when you get to those depths. That's where you find the sort of Kukuras. And you'll also find them on wrecks, that kind of thing. And I'd just use a Paternoster or a running ledger kind of rig just a standard any kind of setup with little little baits on a little sand deal even little like the pipe pipe lures we use we catch a lot on those and like i say they tend to be a sort of bycatch but if you were going to go from that sort of place you'd want to go deep small baits and then you've got a good chance of catching cuckoo and a lot of cuckoo if you did target them you've got to remember that when you bring them up from deep rats do not cope well with pressure they'll come up their swim bladders will blow up You've got to remember, it's not the swim bladder you've got to worry about. It's all the bubbles in the brain and that which causes the damage with the expansion, just like the bends on a diver. In fact, with the RAS quite often, you'll see the eyes even are literally popping out the head and they've had it. Even if you get them back down under the water, probably half an hour later, they'll be dead. I've seen it before where they float to the surface. So when you're catching cuckoo RAS deep, you're probably going to end up to keep them anyway. Ballon RAS, exactly the same. They don't like the pressure. Although Ballinrass tend to live in a lot shallower water amongst the kelp areas and right up to the, the cliff faces, that kind of thing, where they're a lot shallower. So if you catch them in shallow water, not a problem. Catch them in deep, again, same problem with the pressure. Rass fishing actually used to be one of my favourite types of fishing when I was a kid. I think a lot of us grew up with fishing for rass, especially on the island. And pretty basic and simple setup again all it is is the same as the bass rig really you have one swivel like this which you tie to your main line and you have another one which goes up and down your main line which has the weight on now you want to put a, a line down here about 18 inches say to your weight now you want that to be thin line that will break before your main line breaks because quite often your weight will get stuck in the bottom because you're fishing very very rough ground you want to be in thick kelp boulders that kind of thing usually where the water doesn't dry out You'll find the wrasse there or the good wrasse now as for the weight quite often you can get away with using a spark plug an old nut and bolt anything if you don't want to lose your leads because obviously leads are expensive find any old bit of metal or you know not nut and bolt kind of thing that'll do because you're going to lose weights as simple as that but when you hook a big wrasse you want probably the weight to snap off you don't want it dragging around in amongst the rocks when you're trying to fight a fish because they will try and go under the rocks the moment you hook them your trace line only needs to be about eight inch from there. Mm -hmm. You don't want them too long. And size hook, you're looking at around 2.0 up to 4.0. You can go a bit smaller if you're only catching small rats, but if you want big rats, you want to go at least 2 to 4.0. I've actually snapped off a 3.0 cast hook in a rats before, and I actually caught the fish, the same fish later on, probably about 30 minutes after I'd hooked that one. So it wasn't that long. And that fish still had the broken hook, my broken hook in its mouth, and that weighed six and a half pounds. That fish, so the big ones, very strong. Like I said, the initial grab, they will fight to try and get into the rocks. You've got to stop them. So, you need quite heavy tackle. I mean, I say you need it, you don't need it. You can try with light tackle, but you're going to snap a lot of lines. You want to, um, I, I used to use a boat setup basically when I was rassing, but that's for the big rass. Small rass, you don't have to worry about it too much. You can go down to a 1 0 hook if you want. Now, that system, you can use that, or you can use these old style three-way swivels. You just, one to your main line, one to the weight, one to the hook. They're good enough. They'll work as well. What you're aiming for when you're ras fishing, you don't want it ledgered. You don't want it lying on the bottom. Not unless you're in a sandy area where you catch ras, because you're going to go straight into the kelp and rocks, and you're just going to lose your gear each time. I say you want a stiff rod, strong reel, strong line. The moment you hook it, you do not want it going down into the rocks. If it gets into the rocks, game over. They will literally swim straight under the rocks through all the kelp and you won't get them back out now baits that i'd use ragworm will catch wrasse it'll catch lots of wrasse in fact lugworm and things will catch wrasse as well worm baits will catch all the wrasse the trouble is you'll get a lot of little wrasse from this size to this size to this size to this size if you want big wrasse and i'm talking two pound up to well the biggest ones i've had i've had several over seven pounds or seven seven and a quarter seven and a half crab 
just green crab, um, velvet swimming crab, those sort of kinds of crabs. I haven't tried the other crabs because basically there's size limits on them, so I don't take them. But you do get a Monterey's crab. You could try that one as well, although that's quite a hard crab. And you don't need peeler crab. You don't need soft crab. You just need crab. And you can either put the crab on the hook as it is with the shell, or you can kill the crab first, de-shell it. You can even break up the bigger crabs into pieces. Another one that you can actually catch on is actually spider crab. I've used um, spider crabs or pieces of spider crab, big spider crab, and used pieces, and they still crunch it up. And the fish you're looking at, that sort of thing, like I say, you're going to get two pounders up to, well, as big as they get, basically. I always remember as a child, used to go down a lot down the cliffs fishing for wrasse and travel around. I used to go down the cliff fishing for it, and it wasn't great down there. I'd climb back up the cliff, go along, climb back down the cliff again. Not doing that anymore. <laughs> and we used to go, like I say, go to all our spots fishing for wrasse. And when you put worm on, you'd catch wrasse nonstop. The moment your line hits the water, you'd be pulling wrasse out. But then I saw a guy when I was, like I say, about 11, I think it was, and he was fishing with crab, and he had this great big wrasse, and I thought, holy cow. So I went rushing down the beach the next day, got myself a bag of crabs, and oh my God, after that, I think I had two over six that day, and several at four, one five. It was insane. I mean, back then, there's probably a few more bigger fish, but you, you see the difference when you put a crab on, the size of your fish will suddenly jump up, and it seems the big fish... A lot of fish I used to catch on worm, most of the biggest fish I caught over the years was only up to sort of three and a half pound. But the very first day I put on crab, the size just jumped. So you want big wrasse, use crab. And that's basically, you don't, there's not much to know about um, the fishing for wrasse. Just keep your line, your hook off the bottom and make sure you've got a breakaway set up so you don't lose your gear.